Hello, in this SFML video, we're going to be covering sprites and textures. But why is a sprite? A sprite is a 2D image representation from an actual image. You can use JPEG, you can use PNGs, TIFFs for a full list of supported formats for SFML sprite. Feel free to go to the SFML website or just have a quick Google and you'll see all of the different supported formats. But PNG, JPEG are the two really common ones, so you should be all good. I've got a resource image already, it's just a brick JPEG, and I've got it in a folder called res image, or I mean IMG, brick.jpg. So you can have it in whatever directory you want. Just make sure when you specify the file path to said image, it is updated accordingly. So to create a sprite, first of all, you need to create a texture. So SF texture, and I'm gonna call this texture. Then we need to load a file into the texture. So we're gonna do it within an if statement, and this will allow us to check if the file has loaded correctly. If something gone wrong, then this if statement will get triggered, and therefore we can print something out to the user like or the developer us, so we can see that maybe we incorrectly spelled the image, or it's in a different file, different folder, something along those lines. So we're gonna put res for slash img for slash brick dot jpg, like so. And let me format the code the way I like it, and I'm gonna just do a std c out load failed if something happens if it doesn't load it correctly and I'm just going to put a system pause so system pause like so now that we've actually loaded the texture we can create our sprite to do that we just do ff sprite I'm going to call it sprite very creative obviously and to set the texture, you do sprite.set texture, specify the texture, which is called texture. And now we're ready to draw this. So if we go down to where we clear the screen, after that, between the clearing and the displaying, do window.draw. Inside here, specify the sprite. Oh, I'll put now, that's not gonna run. And now if we run this, we will get a sprite on our screen. As you can see, that's pretty cool. So there are a couple of other methods that you can deal with. First of all, you can do a sprite.setTextureRect, and this takes a sfintRect, and this takes a starting value. I'll explain in a second exactly what this does. And if I put, let's say, 200, by, now let's put 64 by 64. So what this essentially does is just draws a portion of our image. Zero, zero is the top left of the image. As, so it's essentially drawing the first 64 pixels across and the six, first 64 pixels down as you'll be able to see. So if you just wanna draw a certain portion of the image, you can do it using that method. So there you go, you've essentially just got a 64 by 64 portion of the image. So there is another method that we can deal with, and that is sprite.set color, and we can set the color of our image. You might be thinking, why would we set the color of an image when we already have a texture? It's sort of like a color mask, so you just specify ff color, and you just put in some value. So if we want a blue color mask for 0, 0, 255, these values range between 0 and 255. So there's 256 different increments, and it's red, green, and blue. So there'll be no red or green mask, it'll just be a full on blue mask. So let me just run this. It looks pretty cool, but what I'm gonna do is just Comment this line out so you can actually see it in its entirety. There you go, we have a blue mask and a cool example usage case for this would be if you're 
if you have a character in your game and it gets damaged it might just briefly turn red and that indicates to you that, that something has gone wrong something like that would be pretty darn cool you can also set an optional fourth parameter which is the alpha value so if i plus 64 which is roughly 25 percent this will be a lot fainter as you can see it's very hard to see now it is still there but it's very hard to see what i'm actually going to do is set it back to fully visible in terms of no masking but have the alpha so you can actually see it without any mask and you might think how do you do that you just put 255 255 which is white and what just means that there's no change to the image and now we're going to have an image which is roughly 25 percent of the brightness as you can see and there's just literally one last thing i want to show you comment at this line comment this one back in if let's say i change this to 600 by 600 this image isn't 600 by 600 this is what happens it essentially just gets the last color and it just stretches it you don't particularly want that and what you can do is do texture dot repeat I mean dot set repeated to true and this I think you can guess it just repeats the texture so this is great for tiling a scene a background this is amazing for that and you probably saw there's a method for texture dot is repeated so you can check if it is repeated or not so that's it for sprites and textures we haven't covered anything about rotation or position or scaling which are transformations we'll actually be covering that in a separate video because they can be applied on loads of different objects such as the different shapes that we covered in the previous video and the sprite that we covered in this video so we'll cover transformations as well don't you worry about that if you have any questions feel free to post them on our educational platform sonarlearning.co.uk there'll be a link in the description to that along with a link to the github page which will have the source code from this page I mean from this video and as usual if you like the video please give it a thumbs up hit that subscribe button leave us a comment and i will see you in the next video